What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python Panda Sentiment Analysis and Finance video. In the last video what we were doing is we made this calc position function. We have it mapping this function to a position column and then we finally have a column of change and this change column is actually where we will execute any change, so a buy or a sell. So if the change is minus one, we'll sell a stock. If the change was plus one, we would buy a stock and so on. Uh, so now what we can do is we need to we can just comment that out we don't need that one anymore and at the bottom of you know at the end of single stock auto MA what we want to do is actually have it return the current data frame and that's it and now what we're ready to do is define a back testing function that will use this data frame and test the data so with that let's go ahead and define back test and back test is going to have three parameters the first parameter is going to be data's so what data are we passing through? Well, we're going to pass through data frame, or DF. Then we're going to have close I and change I. And this will just correspond to the you know, index valuation of close and change. So like, what column is it? Um, so we'll get to that in a moment. Now we're ready to define some starting off values here. So we're going to say stock holdings. And this is just going to obviously be how many stock are we holding? <laughs> OK. So we start at 0, so we'll say 0. And then starting capital. And that's going to equal data's uh, close and the zero width element there, so the first close value, times eight. So we're basically saying, what's the stock price? We want to be able to buy eight to start. You know, So that's how many funds we're going to say we're starting with. And so we're starting with the first closing value times eight. And that's how many funds uh, are starting, how much starting capital we're going to start with, which leads us into funds, which currently is going to equal starting capital, but funds will change as we buy and sell stock, and then also stock holdings will change as we buy and sell stock. Now that we've done that, we're going to have current valuation, and current valuation is going to normally equal what is, um, you know, how many stocks, how many, st how many stock are we holding times the stock price plus how many funds do we have, and that will be our current valuation. Um, so to start, it's funds because we have no stock holdings, so it doesn't matter. Now, uh, let's make some space here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to iterate through this data set. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say for row in datas dot iter rows. And what this is going to do is literally it's iter rows is iterate through every row in datas. And each row we're referencing, calling it row. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to want to do here is try and accept. And for now, I'll just put a pass in that accept. And what we want to try is we're going to say index and data equals row. Now, what I'd like to do, let's see. So basically, what this is going to do is gonna unpack the two variables that are found in row. Data is going to be everything else besides the index. And index is going to be, well, index, so the date. So I guess probably it would be useful to show what this currently looks like so we know what kind of data we're working with. And let me see if I have time imported or not. No. Let me go ahead and import time here at the top. And we'll come back down. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and just print row. Okay. So print row. And then we're just going to do a time sleep uh, 555. And we'll come down here, make bring this up, and we're going to say um, data equals single stock auto MA. Instead of using Google, because Google's such a large, uh, large one, let's go back to Bank of America again. Um, or we'll toss it up. We'll do Citigroup. And so we specify data. Now we specify back test. And the parameters for back test are going to be data, close I is going to equal 3 and then change i is going to equal 11. So under some circumstances we wouldn't really necessarily need to do that but since I said early on um, that you might delete some columns or add some columns it might make sense to go ahead and specify what those columns are. We could also reference it with the column that's titled close or whatever. There's a you know a bunch of different ways that we could do something like this but this is the way we're doing it for now. So anyways, we'll run back test and basically that will take the data here and run it through. And we really just want to see one row printed. So let's just um, see what kind of data we're working with. While we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two things though. And we're going to continue on until it spits out um, 
what we've got. So index data um, equals row. And then what we're going to say is row, oops, row data equals, let's see, and we got an error. Okay, so I guess I'm just blind as a bat. Normally I spot this much quicker, but we said inter rows, and instead it was iter rows. So we will save that and we'll run that one more time. Oh shoot, you know what? It's going to get really angry with us because of this. Uh, try, we'll print row. Let's run that one more time uh, with print row, not row data. And now let's get rid of this. And now row data, and we're just running this in the background. So we just want to see what what row looks like. I just was hoping to show you guys. So anyway, row data equals data dot to list. And this converts it to a list. Oh, we forgot to have a time sleep. Now it's going crazy on us. Fabulous. Oh my goodness. Okay, well I for forgot to hit sleep on it. So anyway, this is what a row looks like. Um, basically you've got your name, your data type is an object, we've got timestamp, tz is none, that's time zone, and then we've got type c, value, open, close, high, low, and all the data. So it's, a, it's not quite um, what you would have expected probably. This is a little bit different format than you probably were expecting it to be in. So that's why it's kind of finicky whenever you go to pull the data apart, like well we have to do index and data, so it's still an object. So index data equals row, row data equals data dot to list, and now uh, we've converted that row data to list, and it still matches index as far as the index value. And now we're ready to work with the row data. So what we can say is price equals uh, row data close i. So that's that number, right? That index number of you know what column basically is it, and then change. So price is equal to the close. We're just going to use closing price for the price because these are bars, right? They're three-minute bars. Change is going to equal, um, well, the change. And we really want this to be, we'll convert it. We'll say it must be an integer. And so when we have not a number, it's going to fail for to be an integer. And we're going to throw an exception, basically. Um, and that's why we're throwing a pass here. So we'll say change equals int. Um, int row data and change i okay so we'll get the price and the change if there is a change and then finally what we can do is we can we can ask first of all we need to ask two questions the one question we want to know is if the change is an integer so if it's a number um, and change does not equal zero well, we then we want to do something, okay? So, what well, the way we're going to write this out is going to be the following. So, we're going to do if is instance change int long. So, if it's a long integer, change and change does not equal zero. What do we want to do? Well, <clears throat> if Let's say change is greater than zero. That means we're thinking of buying. So if change is greater than zero, that means we need to um, execute a buy. And we need to ask ourselves, can we execute a buy? So then we would want to say if change, actually, if change times price is less than the amount of funds we have. So basically, if we can afford to make the full buy that we want to buy, um, then we're going to say funds minus equals change times price. So let's withdraw the amount of money necessary uh, to make this purchase. And when we've done that, stock holdings will be plus equals change. And then we'll say current valuation, valuation equals funds uh, plus stock holdings times price. Okay. It uh, let's see. So if change is greater than zero, else um, we'll just pass. We'll let's we'll just say we don't have the, the funds to support this purchase, basically. Now that completes this entire if statement. Okay, so if the change is greater than zero, it means we want to make a purchase. 
If we can afford that purchase, we make that purchase. Otherwise, we just pass. We don't make that purchase. Now, elif change is less than zero. This means we want to make a sale. And so what we want to do, first of all, is right now the number is a negative number. But we actually want to sell a positive number. So what we're going to say is we're going to say if that's the case, then change is equal to the absolute value of change. So that will just remove any negative. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the question if um, if stock holdings minus change becomes less than zero. So if our stock holdings um, or if this change would make our stock holdings into negatives. Oops, let me turn off my sound. What do we want to do? Well, then actually, let's say change equals stock holding. So if we want to sell more stocks than we have, we can't do that, but we can sell all of the stocks that we have. So we will do that in that scenario. If stock holdings currently equals uh, zero, then we'll just pass. And then else, um, and in fact, actually, well, here's what we'll do. We'll cut this, paste this, oops. There, if stock holdings equals zero, we just pass. Um, L if stock holdings minus change equals, or minus change is less than zero, then we have to say change equals stock holdings. Finally, else, <clears throat> um, else means we actually have enough stock to sell, so else, stock holdings minus equals the change. Oops, this is lowercase change. Uh, funds plus equals the change times price. And current valuation equals, um, I suppose, funds plus stock holdings times price. And for now, we're not doing anything with current valuation, but eventually we can use this to track actual uh, performance later on. Now, we come down, we have this exception, no problem. <clears throat> and at the very end, after this for loop, so basically one indent over, let's say print um, holdings, colon, stock holdings, um, then we're going to do print funds and funds, print current valuation, current valuation, and then finally let's print a um, strategy percent growth. And this is going to be, um, so if percent change, let's actually write the column here. Let's say purse change. This is going to equal, okay, this is new minus the old divided by the old times 100. So new minus the old. So current valuation minus starting capital, capital, and this is a lowercase s here. Current valuation minus starting capital, so that's new minus the old, divided by the old, so starting capital. And then all of this times uh, 100. Okay? So percent growth is going to just be percent change, like that. Now we're ready to do a full back test on Citigroup. Hopefully, if we don't have any uh, typos and all of that, and at the end of it, it's going to give us how many stock are we holding at the moment, how much money do we have, what's our current valuation. So current valuation is our current money plus how many stock do we have times the most recent price, and then we have percent change, which is you know how much money do we start with, how much money do we end with, and what is the percent growth um, that we made based on that. So here we have our answer for Citigroup. We currently are, you know, this strategy or the back test ends with us holding three stock of Citigroup. We have $242. Our current valuation is 383, and the strategy's percent growth was 11.78. And in fact, what we could do is print uh, 
starting funds and this is um, scroll up here what did we say it was uh, that Let's see. starting capital so come down here starting capital and then we could do a different stock we could do like Bank of America or something um, <clears throat> and see what the difference is between these anyways but that'll also not only give us the percent growth but also what was the actual starting funds amount um, so Okay, here we go. So we ended here this strategy with four Bank of America uh, stocks and $57 left over. Our starting funds were $96.72 and our ending funds were $121.9 uh, with a strategy percent growth of 26%. Um, it's not bad. We beat Citigroup pretty good on that one. So um, again, this is just a really basic strategy. Uh, we're buying and selling completely blind to price and also the overall sentiment value and also we're using extremely crude rules as you can see we did pretty good there are a few things that we might want to add to this though and we probably will um, later on is trade count how many trades do we actually execute here as well as um, trade costs so right now we're not including any trade costs so if if either of these are high frequency as in we're making like 3,000 trades or something to get these profits we're probably in a little bit of trouble as far as trade fees are concerned if we're only making you know 15 trades or something like that then it's not so bad but we do need to include a uh, trading cost but so far we're seeing some positive growth here based on some pretty shoddy rules and the next question would be okay well these are two companies and really in the same sector so um, what is the actual overall growth, right? So we don't want to just test this against two companies. We want to test this against all of let's, let's like test all of the companies that we have. So in the coming videos, what we're going to be doing is testing this against a larger group of stocks um, to get you know the actual what's the holistic uh, profit that we're seeing here. So in the next videos, that's probably what we'll do. We'll test this against all stocks. Um, so basically, the only thing we need to do here is just add a for loop get a whole list of all of the stocks and run this data. Um, but then when we do that, we're not gonna have to, we're not gonna wanna have to redo this over and over, so we're gonna wanna save that data um, and all that. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. We're gonna figure out how good this strategy really is on all of the companies in the S&P 500-ish that we have, so really S&P 600 or so. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing in the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, feel free to leave those below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.